Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Angela, and today I'm sharing five travel books to read on short haul or a long haul flight. Summer is here, vacation days are being used, travel is in full swing right now, and these travel books turbocharge the adventurous mood of the season. Wild is darker, grittier, and rougher than Eat, Pray, Love, which is the title I've most often heard Cheryl Strait's memoir compare to, where Eat, Pray, Love felt calm, Wild felt fierce. Strait's writing is meticulous and metaphorical for laced. It's intentional and also has a raw and unfiltered feel. Cheryl submits herself to the Pacific Crest Trail after her life is punched to the ground by grief. Grief is more than a driving force in Strait's true hiking journey. It's an all-consuming power she wars with after her mother's death. Grief becomes Cheryl's home and enemy and everything in between. And Wild is about her time looking inward as she determines her relationship with grief. I was struck by how Strait laid her decisions, the good and the bad, bear in Wild. Her actions don't make her likable. She trades sympathy for honesty, and I appreciated that. This book inspires you to stop waiting for friends or family or partner to make a trip happen. Just go. Solitude is inevitable. The piercing journey of a young woman who grew up a nomad in the Somali desert and was forced to flee after the Somali war. Shogi said Saul's memoir, The Last Nomad, left me reeling, wondering, yearning to know more. Saul takes the ambiguous yet powerful phrase, The Last Nomad, and flushes it out, slowly expounding on her trek, her culture, her ancestry, her values, her family, her past. She digs into the complexities of her childhood and doesn't shy away from the hardships. She has a lot of nostalgia for the nomadic way of life, but that nostalgia doesn't cloud her critiques. Saul has gone through a lot. As you can tell from the premise, The Last Nomad is intense. There were moments where I felt my throat dry, my hands clench, my eyes widen. The Last Nomad doesn't demand a reaction, but so many moments and stories elicited a full throttled display of emotions. From Scratch is the nuanced personal account of actress and activist Tembi Locke's life. It is a love story first and foremost. From Scratch is about falling in love, being in love, fighting for love, and choosing love even after your lover is gone. Tembi Locke goes to Italy to find solace after her husband's death to reconnect with a Sicilian family. Filled with food and healing from scratch is a deeply personal travel story. Written with self-grace and compassion, it is framed tenderly and delicately. Sicily is there too, ever present even in the pages set in LA. I've been a longtime fan of the everywhereist, humorous Geraldine de Rudier's unfiltered, listicle-free, commentary-driven blog. All over the place, is exactly the kind of book you'd expect from her. It is an, in the true sense of the title, all over the place mishmash of down-to-earth, waggish travel stories full of heart and amusing adventures. All over the place is smartly written, slightly snarky, and unabashedly authentic. And that is all you need to know about this book. The White Mosque breaks free of the traditional travel memoir. It abandons any sense of linearity. The White Mosque is instead a collection of thoughts, ideas, and feelings backdrop by Sophia Samatou Uzbekistan tour. If you like Bluettes by Maggie Nelson and The Museum of Wales You Will Never See by Kendra Green, The White Mosque will most likely click with you. Sophia Samatar's travel memoir is creative and deeply introspective. She unpacks a lot as she describes her journey, traveling through Central Asia on a tour where she is most obsessed by Ahmed a Mennonite church in a predominantly Muslim area. Samatar has both Mennonite and Somali Muslim heritage, so this is a story of identity, belonging, culture clashes, and deeply Held beliefs. Samatar is sharp and attentive. She grasps onto little details and lets her observations bloom into reflective, albeit meandering discourse. But I think the uniqueness of the White Mosque's structure alone makes it a fascinating travel book to dive into on a long haul flight. Those are a few of my travel book recommendations. Let me know what travel books you loved in the comments below, what you would read on a plane. Thank you so much for watching. Bye, guys.